If you're trying to make music with a DAW and a MIDI controller, something like this, getting everything synchronized is usually pretty straightforward. The DAW's internal clock will keep all of the software synths synchronized. Here in this example, I've just got two software synthesizers, and as soon as I hit play, everything's synchronized. If you're working with a hardware-only setup, having a MIDI cable going from, say, a drum machine to a standalone synthesizer, that can also be very straightforward. TR8S is the master, the Novation circuit is the slave. If I hit play on the drum machine, everything ties up nicely. The problems come sometimes when you try and match the two together and incorporate sounds from hardware inside a DAW. So using just default settings, how does that sound? It's all over the show. What's happening here is the DAW is sending MIDI signals to our hardware devices, and then the audio is coming into the DAW through audio connections and an audio interface. In my case, it's a, a mixing desk which has audio USB capabilities too. So the two software synthesizers that are running on the DAW, uh, one instance of Serum and one of Omnisphere, those are very tightly controlled timing-wise by Ableton's MIDI clock. The two hardware devices are coming in through the audio interface, and at the minute I've got these set to monitor, so the audio is coming into the interface, into Ableton, and then it's being mixed into the master channel here, so that's what we can hear. If I turn off the monitoring, we stop hearing that hardware. So why aren't these synchronized? The MIDI messages take time to get to the hardware and then trigger the hardware and then the audio has to come into the DAW. And the time that takes is what's known as latency. To try and correct this, we need to have a look at our audio drivers. So if we go to options, preferences, and then the audio setup here. This is my audio interface, that's the Soundcraft MTK12, mixing desk and audio interface combined. And if I go to hardware setup, we've got a section here called buffer settings. The buffer size at this point, 4096, this is quite large. In order to reduce the latency, we need to reduce that buffer size. Reducing the buffer size requires more processing power. So if we drop our buffer size down, we should improve on the latency problems. The internal software synthesizers are now a lot cl more closely aligned to the hardware. And if we take a recording, and then take a look at what we get, you can see now that the audio that's been recorded is very closely synchronized to the DAW. However, we've, we've still got a little bit of lag there. So what we can do, we go to Options, Preferences, and then MIDI Sync. Uh, I've got the MIDI messages going to the TR8S shown here. If I just slide that back a little bit, that should compensate for some of the mismatch. Now there we can see the kick drum is actually starting slightly before the time that we need it to because I've dropped it back that little bit too far. So let's push that out a little bit. And that's pretty much bang on now. So you may be asking yourself, why on earth would I want a large buffer size? Or perhaps if we take a step back, what even is a buffer? You can think of it in terms of a container that allows audio to be transferred from one place to another. Imagine you're moving rice. You've got 100 kilos in small bags and 100 in large bags. The person moving the small bags will have to make a lot more trips in the same amount of time. If you reduce your audio workstation's buffer size to too small a size, the computer processor will be unable to keep up 
As you build a piece of music and your arrangement gets more complicated, you may find that settings that worked previously start to break down and you'll get pops and crackles in the audio. In this instance, you need to increase the buffer size. And this is where it becomes a trade-off between latency and the capability of processing lots of audio at once.